Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to be here, and I really would like to thank the organizing committee uh, to invite me. Uh, I think it's really a great pleasure for me uh, to share this, uh, this time and this very nice discussion that we have uh, yesterday and I, that we will have also uh, after. So today I will start uh, with, uh, as you can see, I'm also a member of Academia Net, so sometimes the seniors give some names, so, so thank you. Uh, but I will start to, to give my own experience, and it starts more with uh, my experience start as a mother in science, more like a woman in science, I will say, because I, get, uh, I had my first uh, kid in 1993 uh, before I start my Master One. Uh, and then I continue and uh, I get my PhD as, uh, in 1998 in Grenoble in the bioinspire in organic chemistry field. And then I went uh, with my daughter in Minneapolis for one year for a postdoc position. And I'm very glad to follow the advice of Stéphane Ménage because uh, after my PhD, I had the opportunity to go to Germany with a Humboldt Fellowship. Uh, but I received also positive answers from postdoc in Minneapolis, and he said, you have to go there, and because I think it's important to, to, to go outside of Europe. And I follow his advice, even if it's not so easy for me, uh, but I'm very glad to take this decision. Um, two other persons who are very important in the next years was um, Marc Foncave and Jean Lhomme, because when I was in Minneapolis, I have been contacted by the High Magnetic Field Laboratory in Grenoble with a physicist lab. So there is only physicists in this lab. And they wanted to open uh, the EPR facility uh, to bio, biochemistry and chemistry. And they really wanted to have someone who can do that. And they asked Marc Foncave and Jean Lhomme, and they give my name. So I'm very uh, thankful for them course. And so I decided to go, uh, to go back in Grenoble in this lab. Even if I was not an expert, I knew EPR, but I was not an expert in EPR spectroscopy. So it was a very interesting uh, experience, I will say, because I learned a lot with wonderful people around. And I learned how to be in a physics lab. It was not so easy for me at the beginning. But it was a very nice story. And, and so I enter at the CNRS in 201, and then I get the uh, Sinera's bronze medal thanks to all this work in 2007. But at that time, I also missed my chemistry. And I decided, with also Alain de Rosé, who was a great mentor also for me, uh, to, uh, to join his lab. And because I really missed to do my own compound, my own chemistry. And because I didn't want to stop EPR spectroscopy, we have a deal. And he bought for me, because at that time, there are some money at the DCM to buy a new EPR machine that I can continue both to do EPR spectroscopy and to also develop my own uh, chemistry and go back to the bio-inorganic chemistry field. So then I have my second kid, uh, Clemence, in 2008, and I was promoted in 2010. And then I have my third kid, <laughs> Mathilde, in 2012. And uh, in 2007, uh, I was also, also uh, promoted uh, at the CNRS. So, I mean, for me, uh, I th it was very important to always have a very good equilibrium between my professional life and my personal life. And I think both of them are very important to be what I am. And if I enjoy my time with my kid, I also enjoy a lot my time in the lab, but because of this equilibrium. So now uh, to the chemistry. And so all you know, know that the Earth is different from the other planet due to the presence of dioxygen. And dioxygen leads to a lot of different uh, chemistry. And here it's very complicated, but I will not enter in many details. I wanted to see that uh, light plus O2 leads to a lot of different redox chemistry thanks to oxygen. And here you have the formation of carbohydrate, to the formation of dihydrogen, the nitrogen fixation that we have here just before, respiration energy. So due to oxygen and light, it's the source of multiple redox chemistry, very important. But for doing all of that, what you need is to activate very inert molecules. 
Of course, N2, CO2, O2 are very inert molecules and for safe for us because imagine if O2 was very a reacting molecule, we will burn just like a minute, yeah? So to, to use all of that, nature uh, develops wonderful uh, machinery uh, that are able to activate this molecule. And another important factor here is the presence of all this chemistry needs electrons and protons, okay? So if you want uh, to uh, activate this molecule, you need protons and electrons. And for that, the metallo enzyme was created by nature and they use very earth abundant metal ions like manganese, nickel iron, molybdenum, or copper. So when you see that as a chemist, we want to do exactly the same kind of reaction because as uh, the previous uh, speakers say, for nitrogen fixation, we really uh, survive on here thanks to the Aberbush process. But this Aberbush process um, use one percent of all the energy consumed by, uh, by the world, which is enormous, okay? So we really need to find a way to do this type of reaction, but in a very efficient way, selective way, but with a non-toxic and a not too much energivore uh, reaction. And for that, chemists try to be inspired by the nature. So today I will focus only to uh, the production of uh, dry, dry, uh, dihydrogen. So the, the inspiration comes from the hydrogenases, which are able uh, to catalyze the reversible uh, oxidation of H2 into protons of reduction of proton to H2. And if you look inside uh, this uh, metal enzyme, you find the active site here with a nickel, an iron, and two sulfur, and very uh, original um, uh, coordination, uh, ligand coordination. So people try to model these systems, and as you may see, uh, this structure was resolved in 1995, and the first bio-inspired structural model was uh, published in 96 by Darensburg. Of course, as you can see, it's not exactly the same. Huh? You don't have uh, four sulfur around the nickel, but only two sulfur. So it took uh, close 10 more years to have very good structural models with four sulfur, with CN, with CO, published by Tatsumi. But um, even if this compound, it was remarkable to have this kind of structure, uh, this compound is very unstable, not reactive. You have to keep it at minus 45 degrees, so no way. It, it's wonderful because it was the first structural model, but it's not reactive at all. So you have to wait five more years to have the first functional model described in the literature. So here what you see is that, of course, it's not exactly the reproduction of the active site, but what we want to do when we do bio-inorganic chemistry, bio-inspired inorganic chemistry, is that we try to to find um, the most important structural um, parameter here that need to be reproduced to have the good activity. Um, and of course, we don't have all the enzyme around the system, which means that the system are less stable and less selective. So here we, we, we enter in the game uh, with Vince, uh, in collaboration with Vincent Artero, and we synthesize this complex a nickel iron system, which was very close from the structural properties of the enzyme and also have the same electronic properties. And what that was important. And we were lucky enough to see that this compound is a very good model and can produce H2 very efficiently. And this table is complicated, but the only thing you have to see, I would say, is that it was one of the best uh, catalysts described so far even if all the others was not bio-inspired. So meaning that it was the first time that taking uh, inspiration by this enzyme, we were able to develop a very active, one of the best active catalysts to do that. But for me, it's important to have a good catalyst, but I would say it's not, uh, it's not a, it's one of my, but it's maybe not my first priority. What I really would like to know is to give some information regarding the mechanism. And I'm, 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 I really like and focus a lot of my energy on to understand uh, the mechanism at a molecular level. So I really would like to have all essential steps. I try to characterize and isolate all the different intermediate species. 
And I will not enter in details here because it's a lot of uh, small details as a, as a mechanistic investigation. But with this system, uh, we were able to observe at least three uh, intermediate species of, the, of this mechanism. And that was nice because since we reproduce some part of the, of the enzyme, we can then give some highlight on how the enzyme can work. Um, now, as a chemist, you can modify easily uh, the ligands. It's not like an ambetalo enzyme where you have to do mutagenase and things like that. It uh, looks for me complicated. But for us, we can do ligand design. And here, maybe you didn't see, but before, this carbon here were not there for the first complex. And now, we had this five carbon here. And because of this five carbon, you completely change the structure. You see here it was bent, and now it's completely flat. And because of this modification, now the system is less active, and the mechanism is different. How I can see that? So again, it's complicated, but we will only focus on a point. The first intermediate species that previously I can see, you see here the CO bound the nickel and the iron system. And in this new complex with the metal group, no, the CO cannot bound, cannot bridge, sorry, the nickel and the iron because the nickel and the iron are too far, okay? And that completely changed the affinity of the system for protons. In this case, this complex is completely, cannot react with protons. But in this case, these intermediate species can react with protons. Then the mechanism is different and the reactivity is different. So meaning that only by adding 5 methyl to, to, to design a new ligand and to make not so big changes, you can completely change the reactivity and also uh, the mechanism. But most importantly, um, it was uh, recently in collaboration with Abhishek T in uh, Kolkata, via the CFIPRA program of uh, Vincent Artero, we have the opportunity to collaborate with him and we send him to our complex and he was deposit uh, our system on an electrodes. And now because all the work that I showed you before, all the reactivity was uh, investigated in organic solvent, okay, which is not so bio-inspired, I would say. But now, because we were able to deposit this system and we were able to see that this system is stable uh, in water in presence of proton, we, we, we test it and we see that uh, now we are able to produce hydrogen in a very large amount, uh, in a very stable way, and in water, okay? so. Com meaning that from, uh, from uh, only, uh, I will say only, uh, bio-inspired approach, only to try to, to model and to, to the reactivity and an enzyme, after a few development, you can finish really with something that can be applied for the future. Uh, now, um, I want here to summarize the bio-inspired insp inspired concept. So by inspiration means that we take, we, we want to focus on a, on a certain, um, on a certain reactivity, and in this example, it was uh, the production of H2. And uh, we found the enzyme, which done that very efficiently, and in my case, it was a hydrogenases. And then we look at the active side and try to model this active side. And because we have chemists, we are able to do ligand design and very to find the way to uh, better uh, find um, the, key, the key structural point to have the best activity for catalysis and for to have an optimization of uh, the catalysis in a second time. But also what is very important for us is to look at the mechanism, to go back to the enzyme and to give highlight for the, for the mechanism of the metal enzyme. And also because when you know the mechanism, you can optimize your system. And no, uh, I will be short. <laughs> uh, now I would like to thank my colleagues and collaborators and uh, so, the two PhD students, Marcello Gennari, which is, uh, who was postdoc first, CNRS postdoc, so thank you, the CNRS. And then he got a, a CNRS uh, position now. Uh, Vincent Artero, with uh, through the CFIPRA program, also at Bichek D, and people who make some calculation for us, and also Frank Meyer, with who we have an NRDFP uh, project together. So, and then I would like to thank you for your, uh, to listen.
questions? DFG uh, supporting your program? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so this I is it's very it's very a uh, uh, project between the two countries. Even okay. even the, the the reviewing was made is made once uh, once in France, once in Germany, mm -hmm. and uh, and there is money given by the DFG to the German and uh, from the NR to the. So French. this is a joint ENR DFG program. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can imagine to have, it, in fact, something like that for India. Yeah. We could engineer the enzyme now back or uh, to understand whether or not if you now trigger it to adopt the conformational space of your uh, chemical ligand. But the thing is that now we, we give some information to, to better understand the, the enzyme, which is fundamental, but which is also important to understand, for instance, why uh, some enzymes are auto-resistant or not auto-resistant, and to modify them to be auto-resistant, because if, of course, if you want to do to work with enzyme, you need to have uh, auto-resistant enzyme, which is much more easier to handle. But, uh, but also there are some people who now use uh, enzyme as an envelope, not the hydrogen, but some enzyme, and put the compound inside, and then it works sometimes very well. Yeah. That's the next step. It's not something that we, we it's really a, a lab where we have no bio, bio, bi biochemistry. Artificial vesicle yes, with uh, yes, this yes. modified enzyme yes. that not can yeah. now produce yeah. hydrogen This, this is an water. approach that are well developed in Grenoble in a certain lab, uh, not in mine, but uh, on the other side of the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something we have in mind, yeah. 